let's get into this. Uh, what research did you take on uh, as or or have as a prerequisite to make sure that uh, the performances were as authentic as they were in this film? Yeah, I mean, I think there was a cross section of research that I was able to do, obviously, with Stefan because of his developmental disability, that was obviously the more specific uh, research. But there was also, you know, with with the um, with the you know, Marissa did a decent amount of research and consultation with uh, detectives. She, I don't think she had done a lot of like police type of work. A lot of actors do a lot of that, so they're like into it. She hadn't, and so you know, we kind of helped her with that. And then with Stefan he met with uh, a variety of different folks. I mean, the, the one nice thing about making movies nowadays is there's so much online resources that people never had before. And you like, you can, you know, it's it, nothing beats seeing people in person, but there's so much online resource. And we also shot this movie during COVID times. And so uh, online meetings at the time were much more difficult because this was just pre-vaccine. And so we were, it was a different world in some ways than now. Um, but but we, we, we had the time, and I think b- between the resources available, we were able to do a fair amount, with again, with some of the COVID challenges, limiting some of the in-person stuff we might have done. Mm, okay. All right. Well, you know what? Talk to me about the effort that was taken to kind of avoid mental health stereotypes in the portrayal and writing in this film. Well, I think on one level, you know, with, with certain mental disabilities, certain films kind of, uh, you know, and I think it goes back, there's a tradition of representation of mental health in film, which maybe isn't even, hasn't even always been the healthiest. If you look at like going back to Steinbeck, like Mice and Men, which is kind of a prototype of this kind of a story, right? Uh-huh. It's like, you know, traditionally there is this kind of simpleton view of, of mental disability. And then even in America, if you look at the evolution of of uh, mental health, the the privatized institutions of the 40s and 50s, which were pretty ghastly places, gave way to different institutes. And then they kind of did away with mental health in America and and the prison system kind of stepped in or people just were on the street. And so you look at the evolution of that. um, And so what I think what we were trying to do was also present something a bit more complex and not just necessarily make like you know, someone with mental health issues, a good guy or a bad guy. Like he's not just some crazy guy, but he's also just not an innocent soul. He's a complex, complicated, flawed protagonist, which to me, all my movies have been about these flawed male protagonists. And just because he has some kind of disability doesn't mean he can't be a rich, complex character without condescending or without glorifying. So that's the challenge. And certainly there's a lot of sensitivity, so it's not easy. And I think Stefan and I both felt the weight of trying to do that. Um, but it's also one of the challenges that, that I, f- that I was excited about and what Stefan was excited about. If it was easy, we wouldn't have, we wouldn't have, you know, we wouldn't have done it. That's very true. Man, that brings up a few different things, uh, areas in which I can go. Uh, yeah. I'm going to try to address both. Let me see. Um, okay. So this film is definitely a commentary on like mental health representation and how not only police handle mental health, but society as a whole. What's your take on the recent like criticism of the new uh, 980? The new story, I did that uh the new 988 uh it's the uh the national mental health crisis hotline uh right. intended for suicidal mental health substance abuse right. yeah right crisis you know etc cetera, etc cetera. Yeah. um but how it's being treated or handled essentially right now is kind of uh it's it's being directed to police dispatch and yeah. is part of the express reason why the portion of the the defund the police uh stance exists right. let alone creation yeah. of the hotline uh yeah. what's your take on that right now well it was it was another of the uh, one of the challenges we had in making this movie is unlike a lot of other movies which are kind of um you know commentaries on issues whether they're social issues whether they're mental health issues the story isn't really an exploration of the issue like the character happens to have a mental health difficulties. He happens to be, uh, you know, a black man in middle America, falsely accused. So it has these elements, but it, it doesn't become a movie necessarily about race or mental health, even though that's a backdrop, because then you could go down a whole other wormhole. And so, and to me, again, that was a challenge, just having a character 
that is special in that sense, but then you don't feel the need to have to over explain and the whole film has to be re like revolve around that. I mean, I've got my own views about, you know, I think, you know, America certainly has, and Canada, I mean, I'm Canadian, but America has so many deeply politicized problems and issues. And, and I, you know, in my personal life, I get really worked up about all these things, but, you know, when I'm making a movie like this, I'm, I was actually intentionally not trying to politicize it too much, which is tricky because as soon as you introduce the topics, people want you to go there. But then again, it can become what your movie's about. You know, Stefan James did if Bill Street could talk, which is about a falsely accused black man being put away. He didn't have difficulties, but that film directly addressed that for obvious reasons. Also, the source was, you know, amazing. Um, we, we, you know, the, our story doesn't kind of go there in, in, in that specific a way. And so, some of it is kind of subtextual in that we, we set up these issues and they're kind of the background for, you know, the story, because, you know, in a lot of ways, the, the backdrop of this story is kind of a, the, the Trump era, even though we're, you know, supposedly behind that now. Um, but you don't want to be too overt about it. Um, and so that, yeah, that was it. I don't know if I answered your question exactly, but that's the dance we were trying to to do on this film is to, have some of these unique elements touch on the things, but not, not get sucked into necessarily going deep into them. Well, true, true. And uh, that also kind of brings me to another point. Uh, just real quick, this will be my last question. Um, yeah. Lewis is a sympathetic character, almost seen as almost forlorn, but highly volatile. Um, and yeah. which, which makes for a very kind of interesting dichotomy. Uh, was that something in the short story or was that something that was developed in writing the film? That was always part of the DNA of the film. Uh, the story in the film was again, kind of, again, it's, it's building off of that, that, that Steinbeckian uh, character of like Lenny, who, who's, on one hand, this kind, sympathetic, troubled man who's got a propensity for violence. In some cases, you know, it's it's because of his physicality or size. He's got a gentle heart, but but he can't always control his uh, emotions and temper. So I think it comes up. Uh, it always came out of that kind of an archetype. Um, and again, that's what makes him flawed and interesting, and not just like the perfect, you know, lovable guy. He's 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 got this violent side, as a lot of us do, and and especially when it comes to family, wanting to find out the truth and protecting one's family members. I think that pushes all of us to our extremes, and we don't. I don't think any of us really knows what we would do if one of our family members was raped and murdered, and how would we respond to that? It, you know, I think it brings up would bring out the extreme in mo a lot of people. Very true. Very true. Well, uh, thank you. Uh, I, I I enjoyed this conversation. I appreciate being able to just be able to discuss the film with you. It was a great film. Um, I yeah, can't wait to go on the scene. Thanks, man. All right. Thank you very much.